Come on, lift your hands up right now. Just worship, Lord. Father, we give you praise. You are welcome in this place, Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for being so good to us, Lord. Thank you for everything that you have done, everything that you're doing, everything that you will do. We honor you, Lord. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We receive from your presence right now, Lord. Your blessings, Lord, upon your people right now. Your blessings upon those who are here and those who join us by stream, your blessing upon them now. So, Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. amen. Well, welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. You may be seated. Let's go ahead and get in the Word. If you're joining us online, you might want to hit that share button and tell them tonight we are going to continue. I I'm, not, I'm not too sure that we ought to be rushing through this series, but this is, I think, the third time, but this is important, how to hear from God. And uh, we should know that it is God's will for us to hear from Him. And so tonight, I thought I would spend time talking about seven ways to get better hearing. In other words, you know, so, you know, even though I convince you that it's God's will for you to hear His voice, uh, there's some things you can do to uh, enhance that. And, you know, the Bible's very clear. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Uh, God spoke to uh, Noah, not in vague impressions, but he spoke to him in specific details. One word from God can change your whole life. One word from God can change your whole situation. And it's important that as Christians that we know that's not just about wearing a Christian T-shirt, but that's having a personal ongoing, everyday relationship with God. And part of that relationship is not just you talking to Him, but also giving Him an opportunity to talk to you. You see, prayer is not uh, a monologue, it's a dialogue. It's not just where you're doing all the talking or God's doing all the talking. He wants to commune with you and have uh, fellowship with you. So if you don't mind, let's just hop right into it. Number one, the first way to uh, better your hearing where God is concerned, number one, here it goes, maintain a spirit of expectancy and faith. Maintain a spirit of expectancy and faith. You see, the kingdom of God functions by faith, and so everything in the kingdom functions by faith. So by faith, I receive ears that hear from God. By faith, I receive the transmission that's coming from heaven. And so, since everything in the kingdom operates by faith, therefore, in order to have hearing ears, say this out loud, say, I have hearing ears. I, have hearing ears. I like that. Say it again, I have, ears. I have hearing ears. In order to have hearing ears, you must believe that God living inside of you is speaking today and that you can hear his voice. That's your faith. I believe that God is speaking and that I can hear his voice. Say that with me. I believe, I believe that God is speaking, God speaking and, I can hear his voice. and I can hear his voice. Okay, so that's the faith part of it, but then you've got, you need to maintain a spirit of expectancy. Expectation. That's a powerful thing to always be in expectation. Go to Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. There's a little story here I want to share with you. To be in expectation, expectation. I believe that expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. Expectation is the grief. You know, sometimes people, you know, they can, 
be Christians, but they're not in expectation. And you ought to be in expectation. Look at this little situation here about a man at the gate called Beautiful. Verse 1, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, verse 2, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, the temple which is called Beautiful, that gate, to ask of alms of them that entered into the temple. So pretty good. He got a place where it was heavy foot traffic, and there he would begin to ask for alms. Alms were or alms are financial gifts extended towards the poor. That's what an alm is. And so he was there literally uh, begging to receive gifts. That was his occupation. And he said, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked an alm from them. And uh, Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John. And notice what he said. He said, look on us. In other words, get your attention off of receiving the alms. Look on us, okay? And he gave heed unto them, watch this, expecting to receive something of them. Expecting to receive something from them. Now, if you read the rest of the story, this man got out of his, uh, he was no longer lame. The Bible says he was jumping and leaping and praising God. But I don't believe that would have ever taken place if he had not uh, uh, showed up with some expectation. It's expectation. Say this out loud. Expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. Are you in expectation as a Christian? When you get up in the morning, when, when you go throughout your day, do you have, are you expecting for, for God to, to do something or are you expecting for things to come to pass? Are you expecting to hear from God? I expect to hear from God every day. I, I don't expect to hear from God, you know, once a month. I expect to hear from Him every day, praise God. And this is what you've got to do as Christians. You know, you want to you wanna get better hearing? Then start off with an expectation. I expect for God to hear from me. I speak to him, and he speaks to me. Expectation is one of the things you want to put out there. Now, look at this, John chapter 10, uh, verse 27. We've got to expect to hear from God. Uh, you know, you'll talk to some people, and they, they just think this is just absolutely ridiculous for a man to think he can hear from God. Oh, absolutely, I hear from God. I hear from God. I, I talk to him, and he talks to me. Sometimes God tells me things, and I'm like, oh, wow. Uh, I wish you hadn't told me that, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm right in the middle of a, I was doing an interview one time, uh, and it was a live interview, and the interviewer was talking, and while she was talking, God was talking to me about her. And I was like, oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> and she started to shake. I, I, ain't, I ain't said nothing to her. The power of God was in that place because, you know, <laughs> It's just a weird thing for that to happen. You sit there in a matter of moments, God sit there and starts talking to you about, you can hear from God. Say that, I can hear from God. Now, you don't have to pretend. People who pretend to hear from God end up in a, in a, in a ditch. I mean, you can quickly find out if somebody heard, heard him or not, all right? And so look what he says here. He says, my sheep hear my voice. That's powerful, right? My sheep hear my voice. I mean, I can stop right there. That's a powerful statement. My sheep hear my voice. Watch this and I know them, and they follow me. Now look at this same verse in the Amplified. So the first thing that I expect, I expect to hear his voice. I'm his sheep. And I don't think a lot of emphasis is put on Christian people hearing from God. I'm telling you, God wants to lead you to some things in your life. Look at this in the Amplified. He said, the sheep that are my own hear and are listening to my voice. And I know them, and watch this, and they follow me. I don't know about you, but you ought to be tired of ending up in a ditch. It's time to hear from God. Amen? Number two, here's the second way to get better hearing. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit and pray without ceasing. Pray in the Spirit and pray without ceasing. Now, if you read 1 Corinthians uh, 14, you'll find out that praying in the Spirit is literally what? Praying in tongues. So when the Bible talks about praying in the Spirit, he doesn't mean praying a silent prayer. Praying in the Spirit is literally praying in tongues. All right, so now notice what uh, this, 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 uh, this, this uh, step does. Pray in the Spirit, and then he says, don't stop. Don't cease to pray in the Spirit. Don't stop. Now, I am going to do a teaching on tongues because I just think that needs to be a part of our, you know, our package. 
uh, our understanding package. Pray in the Spirit and don't stop praying in the Spirit. In other words, <clears throat> when he says pray without ceasing, he says maintain communion with God without ceasing. Maintain communion with God without ceasing. Now, there's something that's very powerful that happens when you spend time praying in tongues on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, why would I even suggest for this to be a, a part of getting better hearing? Well, if you go to Jude, um, chap well, it's only one chapter, Jude 1 and verse 20, and I want to look at this in the King James and the Amplified, Jude 1 and 20. I, 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 I will not wake up and spend the day or let a day go by without me praying in tongues. I won't do it. And, and somebody says, well, do you know what you're saying? Well, not all the time. But uh, there is something that I'm getting ready to show, show you here. It, it motivates me. I, I, I don't know everything that's going on, but the Holy Ghost knows everything that's going on. And sometimes I don't even know what to pray for because I have no knowledge that I need to pray for that, but the Holy Ghost does. So in my heart, I can't afford not to pray in tongues because there's too much happening right now that God knows about that I don't know about. I am weak in that area of knowing about it, but praise God, when I pray in tongues, the Holy Ghost intercedes for me. But there's some things that happen as well. Look at what he says here. He'll build you up. He'll build your hearing up. I'll pray in tongues. I mean, the, most of the time when I'm hearing from God, I'm, it's, it's when, during that time while I'm praying in tongues. Pray in the Spirit and don't stop doing that. Have a daily time of praying in the Spirit. Maybe start off with five minutes, ten minutes, and then after that, it's just, you, you know, you just ain't going to want to stop sometimes. You got to go to work. Lord, help me. Just, he'll say, pray while you're in the car. Amen. This ain't nothing God requiring for you to do or making you do. I'm telling you that all kinds of things happen when you don't uh, allow yourself to drift away from praying in the Spirit. Look what he says in Jude. But ye... Beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. He calls your most holy faith, watch this, praying in the Holy Ghost. He's saying that tongues is your most holy faith. I, I wish I had time to talk about this, but when I pray in tongues, I don't know exactly what I'm praying about, but I know it's good. But I don't have to know what I'm praying about to release my faith for it. It's called praying the mysteries. And I can pray in tongues and release my faith for it. And, and, and sometimes that, that opens your ears up to hear some things. Uh, he said, praying in the Holy Ghost. Watch this. Uh, but build, no, building up yourselves. Let me deal with that part. Building up yourselves. Literally, it means building up your whole self, your spirit, your soul, and your physical body. So when I'm praying in tongues, I am building up. Uh, look at this in the uh, Amplified. He, he says, building up like an edifice. That's pretty good. He says, but you, beloved, build yourselves up, founded on your most holy faith. Make progress. Rise like an edifice, higher and higher, praying in the Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. Rise like an edifice. Amen. Rise like, he didn't say rise like a shack. A shack don't rise. They fall down. He said rise like an edifice, praise God. Well, what happens when I'm praying in tongues? I'm, I guarantee you, you spend time praying in tongues, you're opening your hearing from the Lord. And it's one of those things that you're going to understand better once you start doing it. Don't stop praying in tongues. Number three, here's the third thing you do to, to, uh, to get better hearing. Number three, tune, T-U-N-E, tune, like you tune a guitar, balance, and confirm what you hear with the teaching of Scripture. So what, what this step is talking about, that you can tune and balance your hearing uh, when you confirm what you hear with the teaching of the Scripture. So the Word of God is going to tune your hearing. Glory to God. It's going to tune your hearing. In other words, the more time you spend with that Word, that word's going to help you to tune in to that, that spoken word. See, there's the rhema word, spoken, and there's the logos word, written. Same word in two different forms. Spend time with that logos, written word, 
and it'll tune your hearing to that rhema word. So when he speaks to you, you will know it's him and you'll recognize him because you've been spending time in that written word. So by saturating our minds in the word of God, we tune our spiritual ears. We tune our spiritual ears when we start reading the word of God and obeying it and meditating upon God's word. You tune your, your ears. It prepares us to recognize and to hear God's voice by tuning our ears to the true and unchanging, watch this, tone of the Word of God. By spending time in that Word, you pick up the true tone. Uh, I, I felt something there. Excuse me. I, I ain't got but a few minutes, but I got to get going. <laughs> My God. Glory be to God. I, I know it. There's a tone. Uh -huh. I ain't got time to deal with it, but there's a key. Hallelujah. There's a tone that comes. I feel like I'm Church of God in Christ tonight. There's a tone that comes uh, when, when you spend time in that Word, and when you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you get that tone from the written Word, then when He speaks, you know that's Him. That's God. That's God. That's God. You ain't got to go around talking about, is that me? Was that God? Was that me or was that the devil? When you get that tone from written Word, you will know when it's God speaking to you. Amen? Amen. Praise God. As we begin to develop perfect pitch in the spirit, voices or messages containing any mixture of error or deception simply will not ring true when you develop perfect pitch. I'll tell you, I'll tell you one thing, get in enough trouble, you'll do whatever you got to do to hear from God. And I guarantee you, you'll pull these seven steps up. Now, now what did he say? <laughs> Learn to read the Bible, not only for instructions, but also for tuning. How many of you need a tune-up? See, the devil wants you not to get in the Word of God, because if you're not in the Word of God, then your ears are not tuned to the voice of God. La mosha, this is... I, 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 well, how many I did? Two? I got five more to go and 14 minutes to do it. Breakthrough, listen to me carefully, it doesn't come just from the written Word of God. Read the whole Bible. Any breakthrough that ever happened to anybody came from a spoken word. See, breakthrough, when the, the written word will escort you in the room where intimacy is. So breakthrough doesn't come from the Word of God, it comes from the Word from God. But sometimes you got to have the Word of God to set you up to get the Word from God. The Word of God will tune your hearing so you can get a Word from God. And when you get a Word from God, breakthrough is now possible. I got to leave that alone. Number four. Number four, here's how you get better hearing. Number four, wait for the peace of God. When, when, you, when, you, when you say, I've heard from God, you think you've heard something from God, wait for the peace of God. Look at Colossians chapter 3, 15 in the King James and the Amplified. Colossians 3, 15, King James. That's, no, anointing up here so heavy, something up here buzzing. The lights can't even handle it. Glory to God. <laughs> See, I know right now that ain't the Holy Ghost. I, that, that ain't a tone. I don't hear that tone. That's just something ragged that somebody needs to fix. All right, now watch this. And let the peace of God, what? Rule in your where? In your hearts. Do you see that word heart? See that word heart? Leave that for a moment. Look at that word heart. What's in the middle of the word heart? What's the first four letters? Here. First two letters. Last three letters. Art. So he put the ear in the center of your heart so you can hear him, and that's the art of a Christian. Are you listening to me now? And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to the which also you are called in one body, and be thankful. Now look at this in Amplified. And let the peace, the soul harmony, which comes from Christ, rule let it act as an umpire. Peace acting like an umpire. 
deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in your mind. Peace operating like an umpire. So what he says is, when you believe you heard from God, let the umpire of peace call it safe or call it out. Follow your peace. Follow your peace. Sometimes even though the word you have heard in your spirit may line up perfectly with the word of God, it may not be God's will for you or it may not be time to act upon that word. See, you, you see what I'm saying? You can take something you heard, you say, well, here's a word on it, but then the peace ain't there. So you go around talking about, yeah, but I got the word, yeah, but I got the word, but the peace is not there. Therefore, learn to let the presence or the absence of the peace of God in your heart be the determining factor. Whatever you think you heard, if there's no peace there, that the umpire saying, hold up here, hold up here. There's no peace there. Somebody come up to you talking, the Lord told me that we're supposed to get married. There's no peace there. Send him on his way. There's no peace there. Now, go on, go on, go on. Yeah, but the, the prophet said that. I don't care what the prophet said. There's no peace there. No, no peace there, all right? See, that's the advice Paul gave us and gave the Colossians believers. Satan and your flesh can speak to you and can even quote Scripture. You know that, don't you? Satan and your flesh can even quote, quote Scripture, all right? But they cannot counterfeit the peace of God. Satan cannot counterfeit the peace of God. Your flesh cannot, cannot counterfeit the peace of God. You know, the devil will quote Scripture to Jesus in the, uh, in the wilderness, wasn't he? But he cannot counterfeit the peace of God. Peace is God's umpire that tells us whether a voice, a person, or a situation is safe or out. The absence of peace exposes lies. <clears throat> it exposes deception. But the presence of peace confirms the voice or the will of God for your life. So therefore, do not act upon the word you have heard unless your heart is filled with God's peace. That's huge. You know, sometimes, I mean, you know, you can get around some real deep Christians sometimes. You've got to let the peace of God be your umpire. Number five, number five, if you doubt, don't. Don't what? Don't nothing. If you doubt, don't. If you don't know, don't go. All right, number five, if you doubt, don't. If you don't know, don't go. If you don't know it's God, don't step out. Don't make a more, uh, don't make a move of any kind in your life uh, on any inner directive until all of your doubts are gone. Don't ever step out on something you doubt or you question uh, as, as, as far as that piece is concerned. Number six, real quick, seek godly counsel. Seek godly counsel. Counsel. Look at Proverbs 24 and 6 and then Colossians 13 and 1. You say you've heard a voice from God. You say you're hearing from God. Seek godly counsel. I mean, it's a serious thing. I know a lot of people play around with talking about the Lord told me. The Lord ain't said nothing to half them people that have been telling you the Lord told them that. Well, the Lord told me to lead a church. What, did the Lord tell you to join the church? Yeah, but so is God double-minded? What you hear now? It's, it's just weird how people do that. They just play around with talking about they heard something from God like it's, uh, like it's a game. It's a serious thing. To, when you say the Lord said that, that's not a, that shouldn't be a religious cliche. He actually should have said that. See, what happens is you'll talk, you, you, you're talking yourself in deception by saying what you want to happen, talking about the Lord told you to do that. Well, well how come you didn't come to church this morning? Because the Lord told me not to. That could be true, but you better make sure it's God. You better make sure it's God. All right? Proverbs 24, 6, For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. And in the multitude of counselors, there's what? There's what? Safety. So if you heard something and you really believe it's God, then get with the multitude of counselors. Get a witness of two or three witnesses and let it be established from that. You know, God told me to, to, uh, to, uh, to give Give my house away. You need to know God said that. 
because at the end, everybody going to know whether he said it or not. You homeless, God ain't going to tell you to give something away, and then you suffer from doing what he told you to do. So a multitude of counselors will provide safety in those situations. Look at 2 Corinthians 13 and 1. 2 Corinthians 13 and, and verse 1. So this is the, the things you do. You say you heard something from God. Verse 1 says, this is the third time I'm coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Well, we can establish that. This is the second witness we've heard. We can establish that right there. And so, you know, don't be afraid to talk to more, maybe more mature Christians. And you got the scriptures on it. You believe you heard from God. Well, if you believe you heard from God, you know, you shouldn't be afraid to say, well, I want to lay this before some elders or some, and, and say, you know, this is what I think I heard. And, 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 and both of y'all get the mind of God on that thing. I mean, you're getting ready to step off on something big. Well, God told me to go to Africa. And I done been there. And I don't know what part of Africa you said he told you to go. But you don't want to be playing around going to Africa, some of these places you're not supposed to go. Go over there and get your tail whooped. You better know it's God. God said, God said Africa, but he didn't tell you to go. You know how we like to add stuff. God said Africa. You said go. He said, no, I didn't want you to go. I want you to pray. And you done told everybody, God told me to go to Africa. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And then number seven, and this is something that really I, I, I got a hold of me this morning. Boldly obey. And when I, I define bold, boldness as confidence. Um, you know, no matter who was in my office, when my kids were little, they came in the office, went in the refrigerator, and sat on my lap right in the middle of an important meeting. It didn't matter. That's boldness, liberty, the liberty and the confidence to, to proceed. So boldly, bold, obedient Christians, they say, they say, I heard God. Bold, obedient Christians say, I'm obeying God. Bold, obedient Christians saying that uh, nothing shall move me. So here's what I understand. Instead of me sitting around uh, in the boat, criticizing people who are walking on the water, <laughs> people who are trying to do what they need to do walking on the water, that, that, that always used to irritate me. All right, so maybe the guy walking on the water, he kind of sinking a little bit. He's kind of not walking straight, but he's walking on the water, but you're in a boat. You're in a boat. It's kind of like, it's so easy, and, and Christian people, watch this, please. Christian people, watch this. So easy to open your mouth against somebody, but at least they're out there walking on the water. Amen. You sitting yourself in the boat. Right. I think one of our presidents, uh, I think it was the first Roosevelt who said, he had a whole little outline on a poem about, you know, you can sit and be critical of me all day long, but I'm in the arena. At least I'm in there trying to do something. But these folks that sit home and they become uh, Facebook assassins, <laughs> YouTube assassins, and they want to be critical and of everybody else while they're in the boat. Amen. Step out on the water. And there'll be people that are going to be critical of you. Step out on the water. Sometimes you just got to step out because you believe that was God. Somebody says, well, what if it wasn't? Well, if you back out and turn the wrong way, what you do? A driveway in a car. If you're in a car and you back out of the driveway and, 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 and turn the wrong way, what you, what'd you do? You turn around, right? Ain't no problem there. Go back in the driveway and try it again. You know, if you... Uh, Oh, what a bullshit I say that. You can't be afraid to miss it or you'll never make it. And sometimes people are so focused on missing it that they're too, they don't, they don't ever make it. And sometimes you got to miss it to make it. Don't be afraid of missing it. Ain't none of us perfect. We all need Jesus. And let me, let, let me let you in on something else. And we are all missed it somewhere. Sometimes you got to miss it to make it. Don't be afraid. Because in the missing, you gather wisdom that you didn't have before you missed. Now you can see a little better with more clarity the next time you see it. 
You ever, you've ever got some instructions to go to a certain destination, you know exactly where it was, and you may have took a wrong turn? Well, all of that, and you finally got to the destination, what happens the next time you went? You got something now. I already know not to turn there because I've already turned there. That's the wrong way. But now the problem is, is when you know it's the wrong way and you keep going down there's the wrong way. I know it's the wrong way. I just want to go anyway. <laughs> now that's just dumb, right? God wants to talk to us. And I believe he has something awesome to say to you. I think he's ready to take you out of the weeds into the green pastures. God wants to talk to you specifically. He wants to say good morning to you. He wants to tell you how much he loves you. He wants to tell you when, big, when, when things happen in your life, it's not a big deal. It's a small matter. He wants, to, he wants to speak to you when you feel like you're just a mess and just whispers this little cool little thing and he says, you know, I love you. Oh, yeah. He wants to tell you some things sometime. And this is, I'm telling you stuff he says to me. He comes to me sometime and he says, I got you. You know, when I want to kind of get panic and, you know, I'm not doing it on the outside, but on the inside I am. And, and I hear that still, small voice, I got you. Whew. You're going to be all right. I got you. I never forget when I was diagnosed with cancer, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know which way this thing was going to go. And, and I decided to just get on work, God's Word and stay on that Word. And I, I didn't want to know what stage it was. Don't, don't tell me. I just don't want to know. And i never forget when I walked out of that doctor's office after hearing that, he said, I got you. You're going to be all right. I got you. Just I, it, once you start fellowship with the Holy Ghost, you, know, you will know his voice. You will know his voice. And when he speaks, it'll break down the toughest dude. If you ever had God to whisper to you in your spirit, I love you. I got you. It's going to be all right few times he'll say, just be still. Just praise me and act like ain't nothing happened. And I'll tell you, within that hour, I have seen God show up and move in the magnificent ways. We got to believe he speaks to his sheep. I'm his sheep. You're his sheep. He speaks to us. We hear and we will follow. Amen. Father, thank you for this word tonight. Thank you for those who have heard it. And I thank you that you're still speaking and that tonight we are tuned in on what you're saying. I thank you, Lord, that you can lead us through, through dark times. You can lead us through crooked paths. You can lead us out of ditches. You can lead and guide our whole life. And so we believe and we trust that. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're speaking to your people. And what you will say to them will change their lives forever. And we expect to hear from you every day. Not some big grand mission, but just to know that we have fellowship with you to hear your voice and to hear what you have to say. And we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name. Now, if you're here tonight or if you're streaming in and you want to be born again, you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, I want you to pray this simple prayer with me. It's so simple, and you can give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're not saved, God wants you. He wants you. There's so many people who just, they don't believe anymore. And I'm telling you, we're believers. The Wednesday night crew, we are believers. And if you're not, join the crew. Join us tonight. You know, the Wednesday night crew, we come from all kinds of situations. We come from work. We come from keeping kids. We may come from arguments. We come, but we have value on that word, and we value that word above anything, and we've made it a priority for our Wednesday nights. And as a result of it, God does some amazing things just because we prioritize him. Seek first the kingdom of God. That's priority. And all these other things. I talked about this yesterday during the confession, and all these other things will be added unto you. If you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, join me in this simple prayer. Repeat after me, Heavenly Father. I realize that I'm a sinner, but right now I repent of my sins. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. 
I believe you're the Son of God. I believe that you died. I believe that you were raised from the dead. And I believe that you are now alive, seated by the Heavenly Father. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. Be my Lord and my Savior. And right now I receive you by faith. And I declare that I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, welcome to the, the kingdom of God. If you're here live with me tonight and you prayed that prayer with me with your mask on and I can't see your face and I can't see your mouth moving, but you know what? God still heard every word, amen? He heard every word, praise the Lord. And I just want to welcome you to the family of God. Welcome you to the family of God, amen. Hopefully this weekend we're going to start back with our altar calls. And uh, those of you who are streaming in, if you'll just text the keyword, I'm saved, that's one word, to 51555. I want to get something to you right where you are. You're on the, the stream, so you can, uh, I want to email something to you. So if you're going to give me your name, your email address, I want to send you a free ebook that'll help you uh, with your new beginnings in Christ. And so we just welcome you guys tonight. We are thankful. We are grateful. Can we give the Lord a big God bless you and just thank him tonight for everything. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, let's conclude our worship. This has been such a cool Bible study tonight. Amen. And uh, it's just awesome. It's just awesome. I love it. I thank God. I am grateful. Nobody knows what any of you have gone through. No, I won't even pretend to think I know what any of you have gone through. But you know what? I thank God you're out. Those of you who are on the stream right now, I wouldn't pretend to know what you're going through. But thank God he's brought you out. All is well. Somebody says, no, nah, Pastor, I'm still in. No, you're out. <laughs> Don't you hear what I'm trying to do? You're out. <laughs> Even if you're in, you're out. Let that devil know this is it. The expiration for trouble has come. Amen. I'm out. I'm out. Amen. So uh, tonight, uh, let's, let's participate in our giving. Uh, if you want to give through the text, the text information is world changers space and the amount to seven, uh, world changes space and your amount, you can send that to 74483. It's on your screen. And if you want to call, if you're home, you can call 1-866-477-7683. Uh, the address, if you want to use the mail, and if you want to give online at worldchangers.org or creflodollarministries.org, you can do that and use your PayPal. Here live with me, if you want to use an uh, envelope, the ushers are available with them. If you just stick your hands up, they'll bring one to you and you can go ahead and, and do that. You can also give live. Um, and is the QR code available here tonight? Or well, it's just, just in the dome? Okay, so. Starting next Wednesday, put the QR code um, here as well. And so on the QR code, all you have to do is take your phone and do that and put your giving in there and you're done. Match sin. That is the coolest thing I've ever seen before in my life. I'm really using that word cool like I'm 20, right? <laughs> but it is. Uh, you can also use your text. Uh, how many of you are texting tonight? I I'm trying to get our technology together. So we got a few people who are texting tonight. How many use using envelopes tonight? Let me see that. We still people doing envelopes tonight. So we, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. All right. Praise God. Now, next week, uh, I think since we talked a little about it tonight, I want to I wanna teach on tongues. I want to teach on something called praying the mysteries. I want to show you how powerful it is, even though it's not talked about a lot in church. I mean, what are we going to do, tear that out? of the Bible and throw it away, it's in there. And so as a, in a part of our understanding series, I believe it's important for us to understand the power of speaking in tongues. So hopefully we can, we can do that on, on next Wednesday. Praise the Lord. Well, those of you who are streaming in, God bless you. Love you guys so much. Uh, don't forget to join us tomorrow morning for our confessions and um, all is well. Love you guys so much. 
Have a good evening. Bye-bye.